Howdy folks, hope you're all having a great weekend and welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters and before we get started I just felt it was worth pointing out I was going to mention this in Mingles with Jingles on Monday and I'll probably do that as well but things are starting to get a bit out of hand so I'm mentioning it at the beginning of every video that I do for the next few days as well if you see somebody in the comments using my avatar posting replies to every comment that you guys make telling you to get in touch with them in order to claim a free PlayStation or some obvious scam like that. It is an obvious scam. Do not get in touch with them. I've been having to manually go through the comments section of every video for the last three or four days, blocking and reporting this guy. But he keeps coming back with throwaway accounts, sometimes multiple times a day. It's really hard to keep up. And apparently, YouTube's algorithm doesn't seem to think that somebody doing this 50 or 60 times on every video is suspicious activity because YouTube's algorithm doesn't seem to think that the same comment 50 or 60 times on every video from a channel that is obviously trying to impersonate me is not suspicious activity at all because YouTube is kind of shit so you've been warned do not reply to these comments nobody is giving you a free PlayStation Certainly nobody's given away 60 of them per day in every video that I publish to YouTube. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Back in Warhammer 40,000, things have been moving with some pace. And I'm about to take on my first Reaper mission. Don't worry, I'll explain what that is in a moment. But first I'd like to point out a miscalculation, I know, I know, do try to contain your surprise, that I'm about to make on the Sector map. Inquisitor Vakir has attuned the Codex Toxicus to one of the five greater demon princes, the Reapers, that you have to track down and kill in order to complete the campaign. And that's what I'm heading for, here. However, right after I had my first planet reach corruption level 5, therefore triggering my first Noctilus Crown mission, which I was able to complete with some difficulty, this popped up on the sector map. Now this is kind of a scorecard, keeping track of the number of Noctilith Crown missions that you've failed, and as you can see, I've been doing pretty well. I've managed to keep a clean scorecard so far. If you fail five Noctilith Crown missions, it's basically game over. And down here, there is a Noctilith Crown mission. The miscalculation that I've made is thinking that I can deal with the Reaper and still have time to reach that Noctilith Crown mission. I cannot. Inquisitor, we have arrived at the designated planet. I sense something vile below. For a certainty, my codex has revealed much. It is the Reaper of the Mortis Strain, Malathian the Harvester. That is a familiar name. I believe it was Grandmaster Vormund who faced a demon by that name centuries past. Oh? How did he fare? The Grandmaster was victorious and fell. We must not underestimate its power. Commander, let us deploy our squads and begin the hunt below. I think Brother Interceptor Isad is going to get to sit on the bench for this one. I am probably going to need the A-Team. So, Corruption Level 5. Yikes. 25% Warp Surge risk per turn, and that's taking into account the 15% reduction from the Prognosticars. A load of Mortis Seeds and one Greater Demon Prince, who's probably not going to be alone. Right, yeah, I'm definitely going to be needing the A-Team for this one. I do get five requisition points if I complete this mission, which is nice, because I'm down to four, and I'm probably going to need those requisition points, because the armory rewards from this mission are all Tier 3 gear. So, yeah, that's going to be... Uh, hmm. I have to complete the mission first, of course. And yes, I am going to save the game here. And no, it's not save scumming unless you actually use the save. Right? <laughs> I'm just being cautious. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah. Paladin Thule, Librarian Foros, Justicar Iolanthus, and Interceptor Storm. A number of you have been saying that I'm going to definitely need a B team that's just as good as my A team if I'm going to have a prayer of completing the final mission. Um, and yeah, that's probably very good advice from those of you who've actually gotten that far. However, bear in mind that I also have Chaplain Storm and Apothecary Han, who are both rank 9, and I have a couple of other Paladins and Justicars who are rank 7. So, 
I, I think I'm all right. Plus, I can pick up a rank 7 Purgator on successful completion of this mission as well, so I have options. I'm not really relying on the same team over and over again. I am changing the squad around every now and then. I do have at least one and a half squads of maximum rank Marines, uh, with a couple of others who are nearly there. So, let's have a look at the uh, stratagems that I'm taking on this one. And uh, by the way, I have also unlocked Reflective Insight, which allows me to reuse one of my stratagems during a mission. So I think we're going to go for Precision Bombard, because it's just kind of nice. Area Blast Damage. Dominate, target an enemy. Probably not going to work on a Demon Prince, but... Yeah, Word of the Emperor, all visible enemies, plus three stun, mass purification, and of course the always reliable Quicksilver. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. Ooh, I'm, I'm already not liking the look of this mission intro page. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big bugger. All right, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Here we go. Ah, the whelps of the Sigilite. I had hoped to have completed my works here before I was discovered. No matter, you are only a handful. A mere one of my brothers would be enough to deal with you, Warpspawn. <laughs> Such taunts come easy on high from a craven. You should count yourself lucky, demon. If it were I facing you, your end here would not be swift. Oh, truly? Perhaps I should make a game of it then. Let us see how long you can stand to watch your brother's agony from the safety of that perch of yours. Right, this is a turn-based action game. We don't have to rush in. So let's just take a look and see what exactly it is that this guy does. So he doesn't start with any mutations. However, he has a hundred health. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, that's a lot of health. Right, Morbus Gift. It's an Area 7 Blast that does 4 damage. Yikes. It also activates Reaper's Call, summons the Effigy of Death, Effigy of Infirmity, and Effigy of Despair, and does a knockback and ignores cover. So I don't know what half of those things are, but I'm probably about to find out. Next, Corrosive Darkness. Targets a Knight at range 10, deal 2 damage. Not bad. But it scales with the number of demons. Ooh. Ooh, right. Number of demons. Yeah, the Reaper's Call thing that he does summons a whole bunch of Nurglings and they all count as demons. And every one of these abilities is worse, depending on how many other demons he has summoned. Oh, and then of course his sword deals six damage in a line and does not that. So, yeah. So the trick here, I'm assuming is not to just DPS the boss down, but you have to take care of any additional demons that spawn. And every turn he's going to summon more demons. Right. Well, I think we're going to start by getting the Paladin in there and smacking him up with a force hammer. Ooh, and we've got a crit. Let's disable the Reaper's Call so he can no longer summon demons. That seems like a logical thing to do. I mean, yeah, bonus damage is nice. But given that most of this guy's abilities scale depending on the number of other demons around him, that sounds like a good thing to take out early. Seems to have upset him. He summoned an effigy of despair. Its power has been psychically linked to one of our Astartes. Our training fortifies us against such psychic attacks. Recommend adjusting targeting priorities. Yeah, Lunette recommends that we destroy that thing right the hell now. I don't know exactly what it does, but it appears to be causing an affliction of some kind, and that is not going to be good. So, 
So um, basically this battle revolves around trying to DPS that boss down as quickly as you possibly can while taking care of the adds and the effigies and all of the other shit that he summons to get in your way. Um, and the temptation of course is just to go straight in there and nuke the boss as hard as you possibly can but you're never going to do 100 damage in one turn. And the longer you leave these things up, the worse it's going to be. So I do need to deal with that thing but I don't want to send the whole squad over there in order to do it. There's a boss here that needs killing. Um, now, Librarian Forrest's smite does have unlimited range. It's not going to kill it, but it will hurt. That's four, basically free damage. Well, it's not completely free, it costs an action. But it doesn't cost any willpower. So that's a start. And there is a very conveniently placed statue right next to it, which can be shot at and might actually be close enough to fall over onto it. The problem is it's kind of... It's getting a marine close enough to be able to shoot it around that big sort of pink purple thing which is actually blocking line of sight. I think I might need to use a teleport ability. And that probably means sending Interceptor Storm over there. And he's my primary source of DPS. I really want him smacking seven different shades of shit out of the boss. But we still have one action point left on Librarian Follows. Grenade, nah. Blast attacks probably going to be more useful on the Nurglings when they arrive because they're like a swarm type of ad. I could just shoot him from here. I've already used the smite on the effigy. Um, there's got to be something better I can do. I could shoot that thing but it isn't going to... Okay, we'll come back to the Librarian Forest in a moment. Iolanthus. You see, the problem here is I want to move somebody up and shoot at that statue. But in order to get clear line of sight, I have to get around that sort of pink tentacle thing because it's actually blocking line of sight. So if I move Iolanthus up to here, he'll still have an action point left. Does he have a shot? He does have a shot. And it will reach the effigy. But it's not going to kill it? Or is it? It didn't look like it would. No, it's not. Oh crap, there's a bunch of demons there as well. Shit. Well, of course there are. I can see the health bars. <laughs> I mean, I did not realise until now. Oh, this isn't good. Right. Uh, the demon prince is just outside teleport strike range. But I do kind of need to deal with these guys. An intercept the storm is my only option right now. So you'll teleport over there. Does he get the action point back? He does. Fantastic. Right. He needs to kill the shit out of that thing, and as many of these as possible, so I will teleport strike here. Well done, Commander. The mere it existence is, of is. such idols offends the Emperor. And he should be able to one-shot both of these plague bearers. We slay the nah, maybe not. Maybe if I fall no, even a four strike isn't gonna do it. Um a crit though, possibly. I mean, he does have a lot of bonus crit damage, but I don't think he has that much. I could disable its melee weapon, so, you know, it is going to survive this attack. Or maybe if I get crazed, it might go for the Demon Prince. Make it attack its allies. I mean, probably not. But it's worth a try. So, Foros is all I have left, and he only has one action point. And that thing has barely been scratched. So, well, all he can really do is shoot it. So we'll shoot it. Hasn't done a lot. Better than nothing. Oh! Yeah, there's the knockback from the, uh, I think it's called a Bile Sword. The sword's bigger than an Atlantis. That's Foros, but whatever the hell that is, but Foros' armor takes it, so that's all good. Next, Intercept the Storm parries the melee attack from the Plague Bearer. <laughs> Although he doesn't parry the second attack and it does drain some of his willpower. What have you learned? The beast appears to feed on the energy of its allies. It maintains an active self-make with all of them. See them. Enough, Chatter. I come and I bring death. Okay, so Lunette offering a bit of tactical advice there, trying to help, but not really telling us anything. We didn't already know from reading the demon's data sheet teleport and get the action point back. Fantastic. Now let's go for another hammer hand crit. Let's see what else we can disable. 
Uh, yes, let's disable Corrosive Darkness. That's another ability that he can no longer use. And we've knocked off 20%. Now what's going to An energy of suffering. This is probably not going to be good either. And of course there are a couple of Plague Bearers. I assume they're Plague Bearers. Summoned with it. And it's a fair old distance away. Any knight I send over to deal with that is going to be gone and basically no longer available to hurt the boss for a good couple of turns. I'm not sure I can risk it. I'm just going to smack this guy up with it and the storm. Because that is basically what he's for. So that's his action points used. Now, Paladin Pool. Got smacked all the way over there, but it didn't really appear to do him a lot of damage. He, of course, also has this hammer hand ability, so... And I am going to warp charge it because on a warp charge, as well as 130% crit, it also inflicts a bleed. And, oh, nice. Yep, five bonus damage. Remember, this Force Halberd does seven base damage. So that was a 12 damage hit. And he's bleeding. And I get to do it again. Well, not the hammer hand crit attack, but I can just smack him again for another seven damage. And again, you're already down to nearly 50%. But here comes another effigy. You see, the more these stack up, the worse it's going to be. And of course, the effigy also comes with another two demons, and this guy's abilities scale with the amount of other demons that are around. So the team are already suffering from two afflictions, and these negative penalties can start to stack up really quickly so maybe I need to deal with one of these effigies so how far can I teleport librarian forest this whole line of sight restriction is proven to be a bit of a pain in the arse that's about as close as I can get I'm gonna warp charge it and we're gonna have the entire squad over there so that they're not also getting attacked by the demon prince while we deal with these guys. Vortex of Doom, I think. Which is going to seriously hurt all three. I love that ability so much. And I haven't actually used any of my stratagems yet either. Let's get that grenade out since we do have a bunch of enemies all closely grouped together. And that's taking care of the effigy. I should probably leave somebody here to clean up the demons though. Iolanthus, maybe. Actually, no. There we go. Precision bomb bomb. I knew I had something that could take care of that. Although it's not going to destroy it. Yeah, I'm going to use a precision bomb bomb over here. That'll kill one of them. It's unfortunate it's not going to kill both. But I only need to leave. Ah, nice, and it's also destroyed all of the cover, so I can just shoot this guy from here now. Fine. Problem dealt with. Turns out I didn't need the whole squad over here at all. But anyway, that's one affliction taken care of. I still have to worry about the affliction from the Effigy of Death, but it's just the one affliction. For now, he's probably going to summon another one next turn. But now I need to get everybody back over here. So, Iolanthus, over you go. And here he comes. And we're also going to get the Warp Surge. So Iolanthus takes that one off the chin. But it only hits Iolanthus, everybody else was too far away. And Iolanthus is a big boy, he can take it. We've got some Plague Bearers coming in from the Effigy of Death. And the Warp Surge is... Mutation. Okay, his attacks are now going to drain willpower. Ah, you know what? That could have been a lot worse. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll take it. So, Iolanthus has this crushing charge ability, which allows him to cover a fair bit of distance and do some damage, but I don't think anything is in range. So, instead, we are going to honour the chapter on good old Interceptor Storm. Because he's going to be very, very busy this Your turn. Command. So he is going to teleport. 
there. It's as far as I can get him. And he's going to start carving our teeth. And he's going to wreck that effigy. So, yeah. I'm going to leave the rest of the squad to deal with the demons. Interceptor Storm is the only one close enough to deal with the effigy. So, yeah, it's going to take... Mm, no, just the one hit if I fall strike. It's fine. Effigy dealt with. The squad are no longer affected by any of those nasty afflictions that reduce how far they can move, or how much damage they do, or so on and so on. And, um, oh, we've got the action points to spare. We may as well shoot at this guy. Oh, and guess what? Intercept the Storm is about to stun him. Intercept the Storm. Can you get an Execute off? Can you, can you actually get there in melee range? Of course you can. <laughs> yeah, we'll execute. Bonus action points for everybody. No match for the Emperor's chosen. You can actually reach the other one now as well. So that's nice. And of course they can't parry Interceptor Storm's melee attack. We'll charge this up with a force strike and there are now no other demons available to buff this guy's abilities. So, Iolanthus, what can we do here? Yeah, we can crit, which I think we've disabled most of his abilities. Uh, okay, we'll afflict him with a vulnerability, so he's going to take increased damage. There was no bonus 5 damage, it looks like you, there are a limited number of times you can actually get that on the same bad guy. Hmm, rend the unclean. I mean, that's an area of effect attack, and it's a bit of a waste against a single target, but it's still going to do 7 damage. Let's take a quick look here. So, yeah, 5 basic damage from his melee attack. But plus two for seven damage because he's just afflicted him with vulnerability. So, yeah. And now he's down to 37 health. And that seems to have really upset him. And he summoned another effigy. And of course, two demons to go along with it. An effigy of infirmity. So, what the effigy of infirmity does, and I'll actually show you in a moment. It, initially I thought, oh, it's going to make my knights weaker and they will do less damage right when I really needed to start doing more damage. But what it actually does is just reduce their healing abilities to zero, which could be very, very nasty. Except none of my knights have really taken any appreciable amount of damage yet, so huh, I don't care. Let's just have a quick look at what stratagems I have available. I should, yep, because of Reflective Insight, I can reuse the Precision and Bombard, so I basically still have all of my stratagems. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what I do care about though, because the boss has been reduced to 37 health, but he's now buffed himself with another 10 armor, which effectively means he now has 47 health, so yeah. I'm thinking I need to finish this guy quick before things start getting out of control, because if I'm just dealing with these effigies every time they pop up, I'm eventually going to get overwhelmed. And since the effigy that he's just summoned doesn't really hurt me that much, I think now might be the time to DPS this guy down as quickly as I possibly can. So, Librarian Foros. He still has 11 willpower. I think I'm going to hit him with the Vortex of Doom. Hopefully that'll take care of... It is going to take care of all the dogs. So he's back down to 37 health. Fantastic. Right. Who do I have? Well... I can shoot him or I can smite him. We're going to suffer a medium range penalty from the shot. Yeah. It will do 5 damage though because he is still vulnerable. How much damage will a smite do? 4. What about if I warp charge it? Let's see. Still only going to do 4 damage but gains armor pierce. Well that's a complete waste of time so I may as well just shoot him. It will do more damage. We'll buff it with a cyborg, but it's only one more damage. Yeah, whatever, I'll just shoot him. My immortals, little things. Oh, I think he's upset. <laughs> right, Paladin Fool, get over there and smack this bitch up. We're gonna warp charge a hammer hand and see what kind of crit bonuses we get from this. Oh nice. Mm, let's see. Yep, yeah, plus five damage. Thank you. He's down to 13 health. <laughs> However, 
He is really upset. And he is now summoning all of the effigies. Oh, that's that's really bad. That is really bad. An effigy of death? An effigy of despair. The tech priest is right. And the demons that come with them, of course. Before they can do more harm. Shit. He's now got 30 armor. And we're afflicted with all kinds of bad stuff. Can I kill this guy in one turn? Almost certainly not, because I've only got one action point left on one marine, and that's Paladin Fool. So we're just going to get him in there and smack him really, really hard. Unfortunately, really, really hard just means 10 damage because of all of the afflictions that we're suffering. He bitch slaps Paladin Thule in the middle of next week, but I'm pretty sure his armor took most of that. And now it's the enemy turn. The only good news here is I don't also get a warp surge. The warp meter is up to 65%. Oi, where do you think you're going, Sunshine? Get your arms back here. Crap. Let's not forget that all of those effigies also summoned two plague bearers so i've got a whole bunch of demons here to deal with as well and the more demons on the battlefield the more he gets buffed so there's no messing around here we're gonna gate of infinity everybody over here and hope that there's enough space here for them to all actually dogpile onto the boss again the line of sight restrictions mean i pretty much have to come to this side and also, it's the start of a new turn, so he just recovered all 30 of his armor points. Oh, and yeah, these resurrection emblems are going to summon more demons unless I destroy them. But I don't really think I have the luxury of time here. I don't think I can afford to split the DPS amongst all of the other things that need to die and the boss. I think I have to go for broke. So, more execution. That's knocked him down to 22 armor. Um, ranged attacks are good. We're gonna, yeah, because Smite bypasses armor completely, so he's down to seven health. So that's Librarian Foros exhausted. Now Paladin Tool, he also has a Smite, but unlike Librarian Foros, his Smite is not upgraded. He can't walk charges, but it doesn't bypass armor. So all that's done is reduce his armor to 18. We're just gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his armor is gone, and we've got a crit, but the only thing we can do is inflict vulnerability on it, which is nice. It's bonus damage, he's down to 5 health and 0 armor. Paladin Fool has 1 action point left, we're going to force strike this, and that should be it. I will not be oh yes you will, fat boy. The entity has been banished. A hard-fought battle, Commander. Well done. Loom echoes detected. A prime seed is present below. Excellent. We should recover it and move on as quickly as we can. Jobs are good, and we did it. But that was... it wasn't easy, but it was nowhere near as hard as I was expecting. I think the Noctilus Crown missions are actually worse than that. So, that's the first of the, I think, five Demon Princes down. And I think the squad have, at best, suffered light wounds. I think I got off really, really lightly there. But show him what he won, Bob. Well, five requisition points. Nine seeds and reduce the corruption level on the planet down to nothing. And, of course, all of the armory rewards are tier three. We have a tier three blind grenade. Meh. But this armor is not bad. Plus six maximum health. Plus two, upgradable to plus three maximum willpower and up to 20% focus. It's just power armor though. That would be really, really nice if it was Terminator armor. I could put it on the Librarian. We've got this Argent Mace, a Crozius Arcanum for Chaplain Storm, which is kind of nice. 20% crit and afflicts vulnerability on targets. That's going to be really nice for the Chaplain. We've got this tier three incinerator, but it's only used by purifiers and I don't have any purifiers. And I could recruit a rank 7 Purgator. Mm. You know what, I'm going to take the Power Armor and the Crozius. And that will do. And... Well, that's it. Only Light Wounds on Paladin Fool. Wow, I got off lightly there, didn't I? <laughs> so, 
Let's see what the Inquisitor thinks of all of this. It is done. Your prognosticars signal a weakening in the strain. With a single stroke, we have ended its spread. A victory, yet we are not Fenrisians. We have no time for revelry while the Scourge remains. Accurate. Four strains of the bloom remain. Yes, yes. There is still much work to be done. Let us not forget that self-professed Warden of the Bloom, Cadex. He will not sit idly while we wreck his master's plans. We will be ready. Query. What of the Prime Seed? Analysis suggests it is an artifact of significant power. I have already put a mind to that very matter, Dominus. With sufficient study, it could be reworked into a tool for our crusade. After the proper cleansing rituals, of course. Fortuitous. Unburdened by command, the Brother Purifier is available to assist you. Oh yes. Quite. Exactly what I was thinking, Dominus. I will send for you, Ektar, when you are needed. So, good news. One down, I think. Four to go. Bad news. That excursion to deal with the Demon Prince has taken me far enough out of the way that I no longer have the time to respond to the Noctilith Crown mission that the Morbus Tracker up here is flickering away, warning me that needs to be done. So I'm going to lose one planet to corruption pretty much permanently and that's kind of bad but you have to look at these kind of things in perspective i mean it's only a couple of billion souls on one planet i mean we've got millions of planets it's not like we're going to miss one and on that remarkably callous note <laughs> i think that's going to be it for today hope you enjoyed it hope you're all having a great weekend and as always be pure be vigilant behave